Oh, oh. Sorry guys, I didn't see you guys there. We're guys doing on my floor here. Oh hey, how's it going? My name's Nathan, it's Roll Masters. So I must have a robot vacuum addiction, so I do have to attend my AA meeting. So I do apologize if I have to make this quick. But anyways, let's talk about the Roombas. We've got the Roomba E5, we've got the Roomba 960, we've got the i3 Plus with a self lifting bin, and over there we've got the i8 Plus and it has a self lifting bin there as well. So this video is exclusively for the i3 Plus, but I'll briefly showcase the differences between these models. Alright, so the E5 is the cheapest of the Wi Fi enabled for a vacuum. It does not have a self lifting bin option and you cannot get it, but the design is very similar. They will have butt physical bump sensors for all the models. You also have the Alcon sensors. And most of them have a core cool handle. Yes, take it to your friend's place, take it to your grandma's place, your mother's place, your papa's place, anywhere you want to go, take these Roombas with you. Yes, they like to uh, be with you at all times. Alright, so what downside to the i3 Plus is there's no killing handle. How in the world do I carry this thing? Hmm, yeah, I can't grab it. Yeah, sad day. Alright, so all these Roombas do have the home button, you got the clean button, and you got the spot clean button. Right up here, so you got that signature design, and you also have the little R for iRobot. Very, very nice. Okay, so let's talk about the navigation differences. You got the iAdapt 1.0, you got the iAdapt 2.0, and I have no clue what this is. They don't even mention the iAdapt, they just say it's smart navigation. And we got the iAdapt 3.0. Alright, so let's go ahead and swap these guys over. Now, you like my sound effects? Yeah, it's really cheesy. Okay, so this is probably iDAP 1.5 because you use gyros or accelerometers, and it's not as good as the 960 because it does have a counter based system which allows it to relocate itself if you physically move the robot. So that's just one thing that these guys can't do. But this guy does have the spot mapping, so it does know where you're at as it goes around the floor plan. So that's just one thing to consider. But with the i3 Plus, you don't get the actual room select or area select, and you can't do keep out zones like on the i8 Plus. So the upload models like the i7 plus, i8 plus, and S9, you get that smart mapping with the room select and key valve zones. Now, all these guys do have the Bravo Jet M6 compatibility, which is implant link, so you can hook up these robots and tell your little Bravo Jet to mop after these guys are done. So very, very nice. But everything else is the same. All the cleaning mechanics is the exact same. They have the dual brush rolls. And I'll get you guys flipped over. Wow, you guys are like flippy. Alright, you see that? Very, very same. Uh, one downside or one difference is this is spread brush rolls. I believe this is all the design, but for the most part, it's the same. And everything else is almost the same. Um, one thing you do notice is the self emptying port on the i3 Plus and on the i8 Plus. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, see how well the i3 Plus does, and we'll come back shortly. Okay, we got a couple clean challenges coming up, but first let's look at the iRobot app. It's that little green icon up there. We'll go ahead and launch it. I do like the animations. It's very nice and very clean looking. Now up top is the list of robots I have, and you can just go back and forth to select the robot you want. But for this example, we did the i3+. Plus. Now you do have the emptying bin option. Also, you can vacuum everywhere. Let's check out the scheduling feature. With the new software update and app overhaul, you can now tell the Bravo Jet M6 to mop afterwards, so you can schedule both the robots, so it's a nice touch. Uh, keep in mind that the i3 Plus doesn't have smart mapping, so you can't do area select or room select, but if you have like the i7 Plus or i8 Plus or even S9 Plus, you can tell the robot to vacuum certain rooms and tell the Bravo Jet M6 to mop other rooms. As a side note, the robots don't share map data, so you do have to do training runs for each robot. But once you do all the training runs, the robots will retrain their own maps and create their own keepout zones and area selects. So the history report is very detailed, tells you how long the robot's cleaned, where it's cleaned within the map it created of your floor plan. Also, if there's any problems, you can see below and it will give you instructions how to solve the issue. Also gives you the time, the duration, so all the information you need is right there. All the Roombas I listed in this video, minus the S9, have uh, the same robot settings. Now, keep in mind that the S9 does have the ability to change power levels, so you got three levels. But let's check out cleaning preferences. You got automatic one pass, two passes. I did find that two passes provides the best cleaning results. What sets the Roombas apart is the ability to go back to its docking station, empty itself, and then return back to its cleaning job. No other world of vacuum on the market has this capability. Okay, let's go ahead and get this Roomba i3 Plus started.
I found that the i3 is fairly quiet minus the noise coming from the drivetrain. Usually this is the opposite where the noise comes from the vacuum motor and you can't hear any other components of the blowout vacuum. Some users that own the i7 complain of the suction and airflow. I do agree, uh, I believe Vacuum Wars tested this guy around 7 CFM, so it's one of the lowest airflow vacuums out there, but keep in mind there's other factors that come into play when determining how good a well vacuum can pick up dirt and debris. That includes the side brush, the navigation abilities, and also the extractor bar type. I did find that the dual extractor bars on these humans are really good. I like the design. Also, they do a good job transitioning over different types of uh, flooring. Also, they can pick up a lot of different types of debris from big debris like these plastic bees and cereal. Also, smaller debris like the powder and uh, pears. You can see the price difference of $200 between the i7 Plus and i3 Plus. Now you can buy both these raw vacuums without the self emptying bin to save you a few hundred dollars. But what makes the i3 Plus unique is it's the cheapest raw vacuum from the Roomba lineup that offers the self emptying bin option. And like the other models like the E5, the i7, and even the i8, they all share the same mechanics. So the cleaning performance is the exact same. Also, they use the same vacuum motor, same extract bar design, same filter system. Basically, they interchange all the accessories across all the models. You notice that little black box down my interior? What in the world is that? Well, this is a signature feature called the lighthouse. What this allows you to do is create a virtual line that blocks out the interior, or you can do a halo effect. So if you don't want the robots to eat up your dog balls, well, you're covered. Well, wow, Roomba, you're making a lot of noise. I'm gonna have to mute you so people can hear my jolly voice. I know people like to hear that. Okay, so basically, let's go and uh, speed up the footage, and then I'm gonna show you the navigation abilities of the Roomba i3 Plus. The i3 navigates very similar to its older brothers like the i7, i8, and even the S9, where they start with a back and forth clean pattern. Once they're done with that, they will do a perimeter sweep, and if you do select two runs, you can actually do a crisscross pattern, which is a nice feature. Now, granted that the navigation isn't up to par with like the lighter based navigation, like on the Roblox, or even like the Ecovacs T8. But despite the i3 not having a counter based system or lighter, it can go back to its docking station to empty out its dustbin. Also has the ability to resume where it left off. But I'm going to test this ability later on in this video. We're going to add an obstacle challenge and we'll see if the i3 can figure out where it's at within the floor plan. I don't know if I mentioned this, but what sets the Roombas apart from the competition that has a self emptying bin is the ability to detect dirt. So once the dustbin starts filling up, it will detect when it needs to go back and empty itself. And then once it's done emptying, it will actually return back to where it left off. Also, the self emptying bin is smart. It knows if there's a clog, so it will try up to three times to clear out the clog. Also, if there's an error, it will let you know in the app. So this system is really user friendly. It's very intuitive. And if you have any problems, the app will walk you through how to fix the problem. I did speak with the customer representative to figure out how the dirt detection system works. Now there's an optical sensor that detects how much dirt and debris is in a dustbin and there's also an acoustic sensor which the i3 doesn't have which allows the robot to concentrate on heavy areas. This could be found on like on the E5, also on the i7, i8 and S9. It looks like the i3 is done so it's going to go back to its docking station to empty itself and then it's going to start charging its battery so it's ready for the next cleaning run. Now keep in mind I would recommend putting the volume down because I'm going to showcase how loud the self emptying bin is. Now note that it took several tries for the self emptying bin to pull up the dirt and debris but it finally was able to accomplish the task. Okay, to test the robot's ability to navigate around objects and to see how aggressive it is, I did put some water bottles off to the left there. Also, I did a little navigation challenge, that little maze with the boxes, so you can see how well the robot is able to navigate around those boxes and figure out where its self-emptying bin is if it needs to empty out its dustbin. Now, you may notice a lot of the dirt and debris off to the right of the camera. That's because I forced the robot to fill up its dustbin and return back to its docking station to empty, and then we'll see how well the robot can resume where it left off. 
The i3 is very similar to the 900 series, which it creates a new map each time the robot starts. You can't save the map, but there's a couple of pros to it. Uh, the biggest pro is it allows you to physically move the robot anywhere within a floor plan or a new house or even a new level without having to do a training run. So the robot won't get confused if it's in a different level and the map doesn't line up. But the downside to it is you don't get the area select, you don't get keep out zones, or you don't get any of the smart mapping features found on more expensive robot vacuums or even robot vacuums that cost less than the Roomba. So what is the i3 for? Um, I would recommend this for someone that just wants easy to use robot vacuums. They don't have to worry about smart mapping, training runs. Uh, basically just put the robot vacuum in the room, press the clean button, and the robot would do its job. Despite not having the smart mapping features, it does have an internal map, so it uses this internal map to know where the self-emptying bin is. As you can see in this video, the robot is able to track where it needs to clean and where it left off, so the robot does a good job with the self-emptying bin feature. It's one of the best systems out on the market. In theory, don't ever have to use the app. All the core functions is on the i3. You got the spot clean function, got the return to home. You also have the clean button. And since it creates a new map each time, you don't have to worry about the map getting messed up or having to do training runs. So yeah, just take the robot to your friend's house, to your parent's house, to your grandma's house, wherever you like to take it. Uh, the robot will create a new map and just clean as it goes. The Roombas are fairly easy to use, the design is very sensible, also the self-emptying bin system is very good, I found it's easy to use, so it uses a disposable bag system, so all you have to do is lift up the lid and throw away the disposable bag. I know some users like to empty out the bag and reuse it, I have tried this and over time the bag degrades, so it puts in the dust and debris in the dustbin, so that's just one thing to consider. Hopefully down the road iRobot will create a solution where you can use reusable bags iRobot doesn't stray far from its design, they usually stick with the round hockey puck style except for the S9, the latest model, which is D-shaped, but let's talk about the round hockey puck style. The benefit of a round robot is it's able to maneuver in tighter places, but the downside is it does have to rely on side brush to get around the edges, and unfortunately all the Roomba's side brushes do spin a little too quickly, so they do scatter a lot of dirt and debris around the edges and in open areas. Hopefully down the road, iRobot will include more advanced sensors for the front of the robots. I know like the competition like Ecovax T8 and the Roborock S6 Max V, they include cameras that help it recognize objects in front of the robot. While these systems are perfect, they definitely help reduce the number of times the robot vacuum gets in trouble. Remember that time where your pooch left a nice little surprise and you come home and your robot vacuum decide to uh, paint the floors with the Dog feces? Yep, not a pretty sight. Okay, let's talk about the last thing is the durability of the robot vacuum. Uh, I haven't personally tested the durability of the i3, but from what I've studied, the i7, even like the S9, they're very durable robot vacuums. They tend to last a long time, and I have talked to the Roomba community, and they own like older models, like the 900 series, the 800 series, the 700 series, and they tend to love their robots. They last about 5 to 10 years, and the batteries on these robot vacuums are easily replaceable with a couple of screws, so you shouldn't have any issues with these robot vacuums if you maintain them and just make sure you change out the extractor bars, the filters when they need replacement, and they should be a good little helper. Okay, so we're almost near the end of this video, so if you like this type of video, please give me a big old thumbs up. That's really help out the video. Also helps me analyze the video and the quality of the video. I do try to change up the videos a lot on my channel, so it just keeps it fresh. And I do take out elements if you don't feel like the video wasn't up to par. So again, if you like the video, give me a big old thumbs up. Okay, so I went ahead and paused the i3 and wanted to see how much beads are in the dustbin before emptying, and then we'll see the after results. Guys, see that? I think it doesn't go all the way up because if it does, it makes it harder to extract the debris out of the dustbin. So it needs to have a little room to allow airflow to go through the dustbin when it self empties. Okay, let's see if we can take out all these beads. Alright, did you hear that sound? That means that the i3 is done and now it's uploading the map information to the server. Uh, let's see if there's any bees in the dustbin. Yeah, so it looks like there's just a couple left, but overall the self emptying bin on the Roomba series are really good. Probably one of the best in the industry right now. Now let's check out the disposable bag. 
and I only broke it. This thing's heavy. Can you guys can you guys see in there? Look at all that. So I will say that the Roomba's self-emptying bend system is the best uh, that money can buy. Obviously, the dirt detection sensor, also because they have the ability to go back to the docking station, self-empty, and then return back to where they clean. No other well back with the self-emptying bend system currently have that option except for the Roombas. So if you're looking for something that can handle a lot of dirt and debris, well, the Roombas are probably your best option. I hope you like this video, so give me a great big thumbs up if you do. Also, if you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Nathan, it's Roll Masters. I do a lot of head to head challenges, I do reviews, unboxings of these cool floor vacuums. And if you have any questions, feel free to comment down below, I will answer them. Okay, so have a great rest of the day, and I'll see you guys next time.